the afternoon, I wake up to an unaccustomed brightness. Blinking my eyes open, I glance outside and notice an absence of clouds. Oh, the storm's gone. Looks like the storm has finally passed. Zack's bed is empty and even the pango is missing. I guess I'm the last one up considering it's already midday. For the first time, pango's missing. Pango's er uh, waking up er uh, yeah, earlier than me. And I thought the pango was like, scared of the pangos upstairs <laughs> in the attic. I guess the pango, those pangos are gone now, I guess. I hurry out of my bed and rush to get ready, then head downstairs. Okay. The team is ready there, gathered around the table. They greet me as I arrive, so they're just waiting for me to wake up, okay? <laughs> Looks like the storm has passed. Correct, which means we are able to resume our journey to Allendale. Yep, Allendale. What's Allendale? We are going to the Wind Temple now, right? You know, yeah, Wind Temple. Not exactly. Oh, what do you mean, not exactly? Oh, you're still wearing this outfit. <laughs> We've still got some unfinished business. Oh yeah, right. We have to meet up with those men to learn the secret to unimaginable power. Yes, we have to stop those men. All right, those two men from yesterday. If we resolve this, then we can continue on our journey. Zack gets to his feet. Ready to go? Yeah, I suppose so. Diana stands as well, but Kara and Amy stay put. Why? Are you two coming? The invitations were not extended to us. Well, doesn't mean... Oh, well, but then... Yeah, I mean, if those two go... I mean, the, those two... Then then the then the two men will... Those majors will be sus suspicious, right? They think that, oh, they, they might be here to investigate them. Yeah, they, they wouldn't want to arouse any suspicion. Probably they'll, they'll join later, but it's like sneaking or what. Yeah. Yeah, plus I think it's a major crystal specific thing. So that leaves me out. Okay, that's an excuse, Kara. <laughs> we'll stick around here and see what else we can dig up and meet you guys when you're done. Alright. Amy nods. That's probably for the best. Yana, Zack and I exit the inn. Studying the address on the cards given to us, we eventually come across a nondescript mansion. Okay. Cautiously, we will knock on the front door. I don't know which mansion it is though. Uh, you would have thought it's something conspicuous. There's no response. Since they were looking for Major Sony, Diana does a radius scan. From the blank door, a hidden message appears. It indicates to go round to the back entrance, but only when the sun has fully set. Oh, so we have to wait until the until sunset. <laughs> okay. We decide to spend our time scouting out the location for all the different exits and get as much of the floor plan as we can figure out, just in case. By the time we are done our ex uh, by the time we are done with our extensive mapping, it is evening. Good. We circle around the house to the plain wooden door. We knock twice and the door swings open. Meaning why is one of the men who recruited us yesterday. Okay. He ushers in through the door and into the foyer where a handful of people mill about. Yeah, this place. Wait, why is this? Why is it this place again? <laughs> I thought this was the casino. Unless every one of these halls look the same. <laughs> Looks the same, I don't know. I take in the marble staircase and pristine house. Some people sit on the ladder couches as we wait for whatever is supposed to happen to begin. Bright light spills into the room and reflects off of the crystal ch uh, chandelier hanging from the ceiling. This room looks more expensive than my expensive house back home. I would never have guessed it from the plain exterior of the house. After a few more minutes, a man with slicked black hair approaches with open arms and a shiny green. Welcome! Hey there. The room quiets down into silence as he greets us. I'm sure you're all wondering why you've been invited here today. Also, it's a crowd of people here. It's because our expert talent scouts spotted a commonality within all of you. An unmistakable ability. A mastery of the elements. Right, right. Then what about Zack? <laughs> a few people sneak glances around the room. I look at Yana who is watching the uh, speaker intently. That crosses his arms, his expression unreadable. We too share this gift. And we too hungered for power. Hungered for power, huh? We spent hours upon hours honing our craft, showing painstakingly slow progress before we were introduced to the secret techniques we hope to share with you today. Okay. 
My friends, if you wish to become the most powerful casters in this area, then you have come to the right place. Definitely suspicious, right? You, who, who, which, which mansion? I mean, which place will actually give you free power for free? You know, that's definitely a catch. But as they say, with great power comes great responsibility. I see. These techniques are dangerous and are not for the faint of heart. Failure can lead to dire consequences. And in order for us to continue, I need absolute assurance that you are all ready to face those consequences. Which means there'll be a test. If anyone is having second thoughts, now is the moment when you can walk out of here with no hard feelings. A couple of people turn around and head back towards the door. Those cowards. <laughs> but the majority of the group, which is still a small number of around 10 people, decide to stay. Um... Oh. So a majority of the group, which is still a small number of around 10 people, actually this doesn't really make any sense. So but okay, the majority of group, which means around 10 people, which means it's like maybe it's like 20? Or maybe like 15, you know? Yeah, 15 maybe. Let's take it as 15. And 15 itself is yeah, it's a small number, but it's kind of funny to say a majority of the group, which is still a small number of around 10 people, but 15 is also small, you know. Okay, but I, I get what he's trying to say, but it's kind of weird phrasing right here. I admire all of your courage, but I'm not surprised by your decision. A doorway to the left of the room creaks open and the man points in that direction. The beginning of your training is in the next room. Please proceed through the doors and our training leader will meet you there. Alright. No murmurings fill the silence as people begin to exit the room. As Liana begins to pass, the strange man from before side, uh, sidles up to her, her, to her and lowers his voice. So, the guild finally caught wind of this, eh? Oh, who's this guy? Brute Man Wayne. Yeah, I think the early access... In the early access, uh, yeah, the Brute Man Wayne didn't have a portrait, so now we get to see who the Brute Man Wayne is. <laughs> he, he doesn't look that bad. Liana masks her surprise and keeps her voice even. Okay. And listen to the background music. Oh my god, the oh, the opera. I'm not sure what you mean. He chuckles and nudges her. It's all right. You can trust me. I'm actually Broodman. Broodman, who's Broodman? <laughs> uh, uh, let me know if if Broodman is a reference to something. Yeah, let me go know, guys, because I I don't know what reference he is. If if he is. He pauses as if waiting for a recognition, but we merely stare blankly at him. Broodman, the silent protector, tamer of the wolves at Wolf's Den. Tamer of the wolves? Are there really wolves at Wolf's Den? Not that I've seen any. <laughs> the only wolf I see is the the, the, the you know the picture in the background. Yeah, that 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 eight of a wolf, but that that's not a real wolf. Again, we make no notion of recognition. Well, either way, we're on the same side. I know that these guys are dangerous, and I've got a plan in place to stop them. Oh, you do? Okay. Let's hear it. How do you know they're dangerous? Do you know what their secret technique is? We have to play dumb here because we don't want to arouse any suspicion, right? Brute man waggles his eyebrows knowingly. Right. Playing innocent to keep up your facade. I understand. Okay, I guess you understand. <laughs> he winks. Okay. Look, I was planning on taking these guys down alone. But having a member of the Mage Guild as backup would ensure the downfall of these guys. What do you say? Are you in? I'm not sure I can trust someone who just comes to us and then say, Hey, you want in? You want, me, you want to join me to, to vanquish evil? <laughs> if someone comes up, comes up to me and say that, you know, all of a sudden, I, I definitely wouldn't trust that guy. I would, uh, I would think that he's, he's crazy or what, you know? <laughs> Diana frowns. I don't know what you're talking about. He winks. All right, all right. You won't budge. He taps his nose and then fixes his attention on Zack, okay? I'll just pretend I didn't see the mage emblem when you first entered Wolfstan. What about you? Okay. His voice trails off as Zack stares him down with his unblinking gaze. Brutman seems unfazed. Brutman's gaze lands on me and he quickly shifts focus. What? How about you? Me? Um, follow Liana's lead. I too like to deal the hand of justice. Follow Zack's lead. Hmm. Zack's lead is like he just stares at him. 
right, stats and brute man. I'm going to follow Diana because I want to follow Diana. <laughs> I just play dumb. But this one seems interesting too. I do like to deal the hand of justice. What's this though? <laughs> I do like to deal the hand of. Oh, this is like siding with brute man, right? But like I said, I wouldn't trust someone who just comes up to me and tell me this this craziness. So I'm going to follow Diana's sleep. I don't know what you're talking about. He taps his nose again knowingly. We hear shuffling and I notice most of the people have fought out of the room by now. We should get going before they get suspicious. Yeah, okay. Brute man nods and we follow the others out of the room and into uh, into an evening courtyard. Ah no this is new. This is a courtyard, this is a background we haven't we haven't seen before in this vision novel. This is like the back backyard in the hall. The courtyard is surrounded on all sides by walls, which upon further inspection are hallways connecting the different wings of the mansion. Because we are closed within the mansion, we are guaranteed privacy. Listen up! I know what they promised you back there, and I know they made it sound like all of you, as long as you try, will be able to learn the technique for power. Eh? But they're wrong! Only those of you strong enough to handle that amount of magic will be successful. And that's where I come in. Oh, you come in, huh? I'm here to test your proficiency with magic, and if this technique is something you can even handle. A few staff members who were standing on the sidelines came rather come over and began passing up manipulators. Oh. When they reach Zack, the staff member notices his lack of manipulator and looks at him in confusion. Zack doesn't react or bother to take the manipulators from his hands either. He passes. Oh. He's He's being treated so, so specially, like a VIP. The training leader walks by and as his gaze falls on Zack's discharges, his expression changes. He turns to the staff with a uh, manipulator and urges him to move on. Okay, because I think he recognizes him. The staff member begins to protest but the training leader stops him here. I think he recognizes that he's the deaf singer. He passes. I know you all have your own manipulators, but I don't care. Use ours anyway. The goal of this isn't to show off who has the fanciest gadgets. It's to eliminate any variables so we can get a more accurate read on your abilities. So basically, yeah, use their own manipulators so that, you know, no cheating and all that. Yeah, it's all, all has the same power and all that thing. Now who wants to go first? One person steps up and attempts to cast a KO, but his nerves make his arms unsteady and he keeps losing focus. Enough! Oh, instant fail, okay. The training leader shakes his head and the man hangs his head. The staff members lead the man out of the, out of the courtyard as the next person steps up. One by one they go until it's my turn. My blood runs cold as clammy sweat covers my body. Let's go, we haven't got all day. I close my eyes and breathe deeply. I can do this. Just remember my training. Once my hand steady, I raise my arm and channel gusts of wind as I've done so many times before. I picture Diana watching and encouraging me, and sure enough, a gust of wind flows through my fingers. The training leader frowns, unimpressed, but the staff member who took my energy reading erases over to his side. I'm pretty sure I can guess what's going on, even though my magic is unimpressive. The amount of magic I cast is a lot. <laughs> They took a, sand, uh, a scan that said my energy levels are off the charts, and yet somehow my casting skill does not equal the energy I possess. It just goes to show that my skill, even though it's basic, it can, can uh, I don't know about killing someone, but it can hurt someone real bad, I think. Pass. For now. Okay, you sound very cocky right there. I not. The training leader calls Liana forward and I take this time to switch out my manipulator back to my own. She takes a deep breath, gathers her energy and raises her arm. Her blue eyes almost turn steel grey as a gale storm whips the trees in the courtyard. Diana's hair flies around her but she stands steady in the tempest, her gaze challenging the training leader. He raises his hand and as instantly as she summoned it, Diana seizes the storm. Pass. He, he sounds really non-challenged, this trainer, like, oh, pass. Like, like, he doesn't seem impressed at all. As a few people pick themselves off the ground or dust themselves off, Liana returns to the group. That was incredible, you blew me away! Hippie could at the- Hey, this is great! 
this is a great line you blew me away like literally blew me away it's really cool you know damn girl you really blew me away with that display okay now groans threw caution to the wind and went all out you should stop why I, I was trying to praise you but making this are such a breeze <laughs> okay we need to stop now I'm leaving now <laughs> okay okay wait I'm done I promise Continue to move to uh, move through the test. Black silently slings over and joins us as Liana Serap viciously switches back to her manipulator and does a scan of her own. She frowns at the results and lowers her voice so I can barely hear her. I'm getting the same strange absence of energy reading that we got back at Stonecrest. Wait, really? Do you think this has something to do with Void? She nods her expression grief. The guard approaches Liana and she quickly puts on a smile. Ma'am. I have a message from the site commander. He wishes to meet you. Uh, what? He wishes to meet Yena personally? Oh? In his private quarters. Uh, this sounds suspicious. Oh. Yeah. It's suspicious. For once, she can hide her surprise. The guard leaves momentarily as he goes to speak with the training leader. Yena turns to us. We need to figure a way out of this. There's no way I'm going into the commander's private quarters. But what if you can go there, then you can like find some info from him, yeah, force some info out of him. You have to. Yeah. See. What? Quiet. Yana knows her voice, but her tone is just as stern. Do you have any idea what an invitation to his private quarters means? Yes, we totally know what it means. <laughs> of course I do. And that's why you need to go. This is your chance to get inside and find out if this is a part of Void's operation like you suspect. Yeah, you have to like play the victim, okay? Until we we come to the re to your rescue. We promise we'll come to your rescue, okay? We definitely do not want the commander to do something to you, okay? She frowns. There must be another way. Probably. But not on such short notice without an all-access pass to the most secure place in the entire mansion. Yeah, the commander's room is definitely the most secure place. Yana remains quiet as Zack's words sink in. And she groans. Ah, uh, you're right. This is the perfect opportunity. What about us? We'll find a way inside and catch up with Liana. When you get to his quarters, make sure you leave the door unlocked so we can get in. Yeah, better leave it unlocked, yeah? I will. But you two better hurry up. I do not want to be alone with him longer than I need to. Alright, no worries. The training leader looks annoyed and waves the guard away. Fall silent as he returns to collect Tiana. She throws one last warning look before leaving. So how are we going to sneak in? We need a distraction. A distraction? Oh, maybe we can use that brute man as a distraction. <laughs> this is the... This is his chance to shine. Zack and I scan our surroundings, a hand falls on my shoulder. Don't worry, I've got this. Oh, you've got this. Alright, you've got this. Go do whatever nonsense you need to do to distract them. <laughs> got what? Oh, the music. There's a change of music. It's Brute Man's team. He just swings at us as he enters the center of the courtyard. Alright, here we go. The training leader looks amused. As Broodman enters the testing space unprompted but doesn't stop him, Broodman stands perfectly still and takes an exaggerated breath. <gasps> and slowly breathes it out. <laughs> he raises his arm in front of him and summons a glowing fireball in his hand. As he aims it straight in front of him, it was only then I noticed he had strategically placed himself so he was facing a large tree. What's he trying to do to the large tree? That's smart! He'll ignite the tree accidentally as a part of his proficiency testing. Oh, we have to sacrifice the tree, okay. Poor tree. Brutman takes another deep breath and just as he's about to let the fireball fly, he sneezes hard. Wait, what? The fireball misdirects and catches on his clothes. He helps as the flames lap at his clothes and drops to the ground and rolls. But instead of extinguishing the flames, the grass ignites where he rolls. I thought he's going to ignite the, the, the tree instead he ignited himself. <laughs> okay, okay, that works too. As long as you don't die, soon the courtyard is a mark with shrieking voices and running bodies. 
What am I even witnessing here? What kind of a, a risky, uh, like reckless attempt is this? That pulls me aside. But this is a distraction. We can deny that. Now's our chance. Yeah. I'm not. And the two of us slip through the same door we saw Diana go through. Okay. We enter a brightly lit corridor and try our best to blend in and stick to the few shadows in the room. We manage to escape the corridor without incident and reach another open hallway. It's surprising that the hallway actually doesn't have any guards. Right, it's kind of funny. But I'm pretty sure the commander's room outside will have guards. So yeah. Oh, but there's a guard. Oh, okay, I said too early. A guard stands in the center of the room making his rounds. So it's just a guard. I, you would have thought there would be more, right? Yeah, but there's just one guard here walking around. Zack signals for me to stay back as he sneaks up on the guard. Stay back, stay with Zack. Uh, let, let's not let's not compromise things here. Yes, let's stay back. Because Zack definitely can handle it, okay? Yeah. Let's stay back and give Zack space. He has far more experience in this sort of thing than I do, so I'm happy to follow his lead. As he gets close, he jumps the guard and covers his mouth as he disarms him. I rush over and help him secure the guard into a more hidden elk curve. I think if we follow him, probably the guard will spot us, but Zack will still pin him down. But, but then later he'll scold me. Zack will scold me. Oh, what are you do? For, you know, for coming out, for following him, and he'll be like, what the heck are you doing? He struggles as we place him in a chair. I hold him down as Zack approaches him. Where are the commander's quarters? I'll never tell. Oh, you'll never tell. Jack grins as he cracks his knuckles. Ah, good. All right, punch him. Good. Yeah, good. I was hoping you'd resist. It makes interrogation so much more fun. <laughs> okay, Zack is secretly a sadist. <laughs> yeah. The guard resumes his struggles, but I continue to hold him down. Zack slowly approaches, and I see the fear creep into the guard's eyes. Hold on a second. You're scared over getting punched by Zack? You're a coward, guard. <laughs> Zack doesn't stop. He balls his hand into a fist. The guard looks at me with panic in his eyes. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> I'll talk, I'll talk. Just get that crazy guy away from me. Alright. Zack frowns but stops walking towards him. <sighs> the commander's quarters are a right down this hall, and then a left at the next fork. His is the last room down that corridor. How do we know you're telling the truth? That's all we needed. Okay, you can punch him now. Thanks. Thanks, POM! <laughs> With one knockout punch, the guard falls unconscious as the, and the two of us hurry up. As we turn down the hall, I face Zack. I'm surprised that was so easy. Well, for Zack, it's easy, yes. Zack sighs. I know. How disappointing. <laughs> he wants more challenge. Okay. <laughs> I look blankly at Zack. Okay then, you love a challenge, alright? I, I wouldn't deny that, I, I, too, I myself do love a challenge. We sneak through the corridors and remain unspotted as we follow the guard's instructions. We recognize the commander's quarters immediately and see the two heavy mahogany doors at the end of the hall are slightly ajar. Ah, so Diana didn't unlock the door yet, leave it slightly ajar, slightly open. Why are there no guards in front of the quarters? Isn't that suspicious with no guards? Ah. Not if the commander's got a woman in his room. And no guards? Or maybe he just wants his privacy, that's why no guards. Uh, I, yeah, I guess, fair point. We slip into the room and are immediately greeted by a frenzy of whispers from Liana. So Liana is acting, she's trying to act here, act like she's, she wants the commander. Oh finally! You guys sure took your sweet time! Wait, where's the commander? Why are you why are you safe though? Calm down, we got here as quickly as we could. Yeah, at least we Where where's the commander though? But at least you're safe. Where's the commander? Yana points to a locked door. That must be the bathroom. Oh. So the commander is taking a shower, just like any Japan uh, I mean because usually, you know, it, the thing is, most Japanese they are like uh take a shower first. Yeah, most cu Japanese couples they take a shower first before they, you know, have saxophone. So I guess that's what the, the, the this commander is doing too. You know, need to keep himself clean before the the act. He went to freshen up. Yeah, freshen up. 
she shudders. That crosses his arms. Okay, then what are you doing just standing around here for? Get into position. <laughs> Get into position. Yeah, you cannot just stand here. What position? Uh, uh, um, you know that position, the position on the bed that points to the bed, and the end appears. You can't be serious. I mean, you still have to keep up your act. Do you want to jeopardize this operation or what? Yeah, we will we'll only stick up on him. We will be hiding. So you get get yourself in that position on the bed. And one when he is about to sneak up on you, we'll pounce on him, okay? How would posing on the bed help with this operation? Like I said. <laughs> because while he's very distractedly approaching the bed, we'll be able to knock him out from behind. Precisely, Zach, precisely. Quick and quiet, and not alerting any guards. Yeah. Vienna sighs, then lacklusterly climbs onto the bed. She lays down on her side and props her head up with her arm. Oh, so like the like that sexy Sexy lying down, you know, with the hand on on the head, yeah, and then and then her elbow on the on the bed, ah, pops her head up with her arm. Like this. Yeah, that that's fine. It's definitely working as intended. Let me show you how it's done. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> as much as I would like to say it's definitely working as intended, let me show you how it's done. No, no, no. no. Um, <laughs> this one can mean two. It can mean two things. You can either mean like, oh, let me show you how it's done. Let me show you how a woman is supposed to act. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to act like a woman. Or you can also mean like, okay, let me show you how it's done. I'm going to climb over you and then you do this. Okay, I'm going to move your arms like this. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> um, I want to tease Diana even more, so... <laughs> let's do this. I shake my head. Diana, move over. She moves off from uh, the bed and I take her place. No wait, we're actually doing it in place of her. I'm okay. <laughs> I lay down on my back and sling one arm over my head as I raise one knee up. Okay, <laughs> we're acting like a woman now. This is what you should be doing. She tries to hold in her laughter as I move off the bed. <laughs> as we're, we're making her happy, we're teasing her, no? relieving her of this tension. That frowns. That's not right at all. You have to be more inviting. What? Inviting? <laughs> Zack lounges on his stomach and bends his legs up at the knee as he rests his head on in one of the hands. In 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 before uh, Zack is lying on the bed and then the commander comes out. Oh shit, the bastard. This is the most effective pose. Right. Are you kidding me? You look like you're sunbathing at the beach. That's not alluring at all. Uh, but it can be alluring, uh, as long as you're a woman, you know. You don't know what you're talking about, woman. <laughs> I think I know a thing or two more about flirting than you would. Really? Really now? Oh, please enlighten me, sailor. Oh, sailor, sailor. And that's face flashes at the memory. Oh, right. I, yeah, I remember the the thing about the sailor. That, that was what she said to me back at the balcony, right? Yeah, the sailor thing. Or oh, was it? Oh no, that was, it's not at the balcony, but just before that, at the inn, yeah, where she, because it's like we're trying to persuade a guy, guy to like, reveal the details, yeah, but, um, Diana tries to say something like sailor and all that, then, yeah, you know, oh shit, we're busted. She's about to argue when the door to the bathroom flings open. A looming, a looming man stands in front of the door in nothing more than a too revealing speedo. Oh my god, speedo. <laughs> oh man. Looming Apologies man. Apologies for the delay, my sweet. I wanted to make sure that I was in... Tip top condition. Hi. He freezes when he sees Zack on the bed and for a moment nobody moves. Alright, before we begin fighting, I have a really important question. How is he gonna fight though? Uh, considering that he's only in his speedo. <laughs> that that mini, uh, mimics Liana's original pose. Seriously. <laughs> Is this attractive? <laughs> you can joke even at this time, Zach. You're, you're, you're the best. <laughs> Mother's face turns red, with, turns red with rage. No! <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly what I said. Well, it would have been attractive if I were doing it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I would agree to that if anyone cares about my opinion. 
The commander roars out in anger. Zack rolls off the bait and withdraws his discharges in one smooth motion as Liana's manipulator glows. Alright, we are gonna 3 on 1. I pull out my sword and radio fighting stance. Commander glares at us. Do you really think that a bunch of amateurs can take out someone as powerful as I? You fools will regret ever crossing paths with a shadow general. Alright, but uh, just look at yourself before you say such a line. <laughs> He raises his arms and readies the stance. Then his face falls as he realizes he's yeah there. Almost. Oh shit. Okay, bye. That shoots a blast which knocks the commander down. Okay. <laughs> he smashes his head against the dresser and falls to the ground with a heavy thud. Oh shit. Shoots a blast then followed by a smash to the to his head. <laughs> okay, he's definitely knocked out. Yena rushes to check him, her sword at the ready, but he's knocked out cold. I shift my blade. That was easy, yeah, because he's not equipped, so they aren't so tough without their magic. Of course, yeah. Yena has her manipulator out and performs a scan. He said he was a shadow general. That just confirms that this has something to do with Void. Yeah, I mean only Void would would have a shadow general. She suddenly focuses on an area in the floor. Climbing up the floorboard, we find a large bag filled with dark spheres. Oh, dark spheres, I mean. Tainted spheres. Yeah, void. Definitely void. We can't leave the spheres here. We have to take them. Take them and uh, keep it as evidence or something. We'll be too conspicuous lugging this bag around. Yeah, we should actually destroy them. But it would be even more dangerous to leave them here for them to use. So destroy them, you know, but... Oh yeah, the thing is how. <laughs> also, what should we do with the Shadow General? Just leave him here? That shots. Oh, suddenly the window crashes open. We ready ourselves for another battle, but we recognize the figure as Broodman. What's, what are you doing here? He does himself, he does himself off and heads straight for the commander. Finally, we meet again. Yeah, but he's dead. Oh well, he's not dead, but he's knocked out. <laughs> Rootman doesn't seem to notice we're there as he continues addressing the commander. For all these years, I have slowly unraveled everything you've worked so hard to build. <laughs> I have been that splinter that you just can't pull out. And now I am here to finish what I have started. Can you actually look at the whole situation before you say all these lines, Rootman? <laughs> For I am Rootman. You killed my brother. Prepare to die. S now it sounds so over dramatic coming from him. <laughs> sounds as the commander doesn't react. And even now, you won't give me the decency of even acknowledging my presence. He's knocked out cold, Broodman. He moves in to kick the commander when we stop him. Hey, wait! He's unconscious! Yeah, we, we don't want to wake him up. Broodman pauses. Ah, uh, yes, of course. He was so intimidated by my speech that he passed out in fear. Face pump. <laughs> face pump. Seriously, face pump. Uh, that's not what Broodman strikes to the commander and seemingly without effort falls him over his shoulder. Are you gonna take him? Don't worry, I'll take it from here. Okay. He launches the commander out of the newly opened window. Wait, what? Wait, what the hell are you doing? Did you just throw the commander out of the window? What the hell? We're on the second floor. Yeah. Oh. Okay, now he's dead. We rush to the window. A fall from the second level may not be fatal, but it could still break a few bones. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, maybe not fatal, but still, you know, very serious injuries. Luckily, the commander landed on a bush and looked unscathed. Unscarped. Broodman crosses his arms triumphantly. Come on now, Broodman. Don't try to be a smart aleck here. All according to plan, my friends. Yeah, right. Bullshit. Climbs back through the window and lands on his feet beside the commander, then takes him away into the night. I wonder if we'll meet him again. Probably. We pause as we let all of that sink in. Yeah, that's, that was so stupid. <laughs> we should get out of here before we attract too much attention. Yeah, and uh, what, what about the spheres though? I guess we're taking the spheres with us. Yeah, no, not. She carries the back of tainted spheres as naturally as she can and pushes open the doors. There are two guards now stationed in front of the commander's quarters. Oh shit. And they keep us questioning looks as the three of us slip out, careful not uh, careful to close the door behind us. Where is the commander? Well he got he, he got knocked out from all the saxophone. 
please don't disturb him. He's all tuckered out from our certain activities. Yes, that's right, Leon. Yeah, you go, girl. She wins. Guy clears his throat uncomfortably. <laughs> right, I, uh, I understand. The second guy looks suspiciously at Zack and me. Hold on, what about you two? Well, we're there to help. Oh, don't worry, we took, up, uh, we took part in those activities too. Yeah, you know, the commander is a gay. He's gay, secretly. I wink. <laughs> I try to hold back my laughter at their horrified expressions. Would you like us to elaborate? Yeah, would you like us to elaborate? Nope, not necessary. You may go. Back green says the three of us walks out of the corridor. Because the commander had made it clear what his intentions were with Liana, we had no trouble with any of the guards meeting about and were able to exit the mansion unquestioned. Yeah. Once we were safely outside, we raced back to the inn. Bursting through the doors, we very urgently scoop up Amy and Kara. Greetings upon your safe return. I assume your endeavors were successful. Greetings upon your safe return. Wow, that's a really, really, really formal line. But this is a great line to use for if you want to sound, sound like a, like a very well-educated scholar. <laughs> yep, everything's great, but we should really be getting a move on now. We'll fill you in on the details later. Okay. Amelia looks surprised, but Kara notices the bag Diana carries and urges Amy. Sounds good. We've been itching to get out of here anyway. Come on, Amy. Let's go grab our things and head out. The sooner we're out of here, the closer we'll be to Ellendale. Yeah, we have to get out of here at any rate before the, the people at the, that hall, that mansion, yeah, finds out about us. Amy shrugs and follows Kara upstairs to grab their things. Once they return downstairs, we depart the area to get out of Wu's den now. As we leave Wu's den, I spot the familiar dark visage of Broodman. Oh! Beside him is a woman wearing a hooded green cloak. She carries a large bow on her back. A woman? What are they doing? There's no time for this. I might as well check them out. I slip away from the group and step closer to Broodman, making sure to stay hidden from their view. The woman has braided long white hair and fine lines trace a tan skin. Man nods. The deed has been done. Void's operation here will crumble without their commander. Wolf's den need fear the shadows no longer. Man, are you sure that guy is the commander? I'm pretty sure he's not the commander. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. No. The woman nods in satisfaction. Oh, who's this lady? Actually, I don't remember this part before. In the early access. Yeah, I seriously don't remember this part before. Yeah, and I definitely don't remember this woman. I don't think... Yeah, I don't think there's a dialogue of this before though. Like really, yeah, I don't remember. In the early access version. So, hmm... We'll, I guess we'll find out who this woman is later. Suddenly her gaze slides to me. Oh shit! I freeze, unable to move. What do I do? Rootman notices her gaze and looks at me. He flashes me a broad smile and gives me a thumbs up. I guess they're... She's on the good side, so I guess it's okay. But uh, this woman just stares at me. The woman's face is partially hidden behind a scarf, but she nods slowly, approvingly. Yeah, the one behind the scarf, yes. And she abruptly turns and leaps up. So she's like an assassin. She scales the wall and it disappears onto the rooftop, silent and graceful like a cat. Rootman pulls himself up using his brute strength before following closely behind. I think we'll see more of them later. At least I know he's doing okay. I catch up with my friends as we continue out of the gates of Wolf's Den. Alright. Once we are on the road, Diana and I fill the rest of the team in on what happened. After travelling as swiftly as we can for the rest of the evening, we decide to make camp. We choose a secluded area off of the main road and set to work. Diana and I split up to search for firewood while Zack and Kara prepare our rations. Amy unrolls her sleeping pack and lights the campfire. The pango cutters beside her and watches the dancing flames. Once the food is ready, all of us gather around and begin to eat in silence. Kara playfully breaks the silence. Foiling another void operation. Seems like just another day in the life now. It's become... You can say it's become our daily routine now. Actually, now that you mention it, we have seen a lot of void presence lately. 
Weren't they supposed to have been disbanded and outlawed? Oh yeah, they're everywhere. Probably they're trying to stage a comeback, you know? Unless every single person who believes in Void's ideals and goals are gone, it's impossible to fully get rid of Void. Yeah. They've always been around, even after the Tree of Asaria. They're just more secretive about it now. It's like it's impossible to get rid of Eva. Eva always exists. Will, will definitely exist. And there's such a thing as necessary Eva too, you know. It's just, you won't find them unless you know where to look. The media thinks. If what you say about Void and its operations are true, then the most logical course of action would be to alert the Mage Guild or Academy of their whereabouts. Hmm. They're probably already aware of Void activities and have missions to monitor or take care of things. It's true that the Mage Guild has involved with a lot of suspicious reports of magical activities. I'm sure many of them have some connection to Void, which the Guild would keep secret so as not to entice widespread panic. Uh, oh, many of those reports. That makes sense. A responsible organization like this would have some serious flaws in its intelligence. If they were completely blindsided by all of this, maybe not. What has been said seems sensible. Zack points to the back of Spheres. I notice that Diana is still wearing this armor, so she's used to it. <laughs> I hope she's, she keeps wearing this armor all the way. Actually, I like the original too, yeah, but maybe she'll change back to the original later. What are we gonna do with those? Someone will probably come looking for them. Yeah, they'll probably be right here looking for us now, chasing after us. Diana moves towards the back. We'll turn them into the Mage Guild of the next city, and let them know what happened. Mm, okay, sounds like a plan. She tries to secure the back when a blue little head pops up. Oh, Pango, I forgot about you. Oi. Hey, you have been in the back all along? Pango dives back into the sea of spheres and we hear contented sighs of... Hi! Pango, what are you doing in there? Well, it's magic, so... She reaches straight into the back and pulls him out much to the Pango's dismay. Boy, boy. He wants to, Pango wants to eat the magic. He struggles against her grip but she grabs him firmly. Uh, if a Pango absorbs a tainted sphere, will the Pango become tainted too? I would like to think not. Because I guess the Pango is immune to taintedness or whatever. Yeah, Amy shakes her head. No. The way a sphere becomes tainted is by becoming super saturated with energy, thus becoming unstable. I see, so it has nothing to do with tainting someone else. A Pongo's absorption of energy is to turn sad energy into fuel. Ah. He is unaffected by the type of energy absorbed. I see, that makes a lot of sense. But that turns said energy into fuel. Fuel, so it's some kind of like an energy for Pongo, but it's kind of weird, like turn said energy into fuel. But fuel is like used to usually for cars and all that, but a pango? Pango is a living thing though. But I guess it's still some sort of like an energy, or it's just a different form of energy. Yeah. Kara looks intrigued. She scoots closer to the pango and tickles him. He giggles. Huh, I never knew that. But good to know, yes. If that's the case, we are, why aren't pangos used against Void? Send them into void establishments to avoid the tainted spheres. But we need to collect a lot of a lot of pangos, right? Absorbing spheres doesn't happen overnight. And when a pango is full, he'll stop absorbing energy. Just like how we can't eat anymore yeah. after we finished a meal. So you know, a pango is, is at the end of the day is still a living thing, you know. So like eating So basically, you know, when it absorbs energy it's like eating a meal. Yeah, so it's like you you eventually get full. Perhaps in a span of a couple months, a pongo could remove all energy within a tainted sphere. Okay, that's too long though. <laughs> a span of a couple months just for one tainted sphere? Exactly. The process is just too slow to be effective during a battle. Yeah. The pongo manages to wiggle out of Liana's grass and plops down beside me. He stares longingly at the back but makes no move to return. We finish up eating and begin to clean up. Afterwards, I stifle a yawn. The stars shine pinpoints of light amidst the black sky and their comforting glow 
makes me even sleepier. We've had a long day. As the rest of the group also get ready for bed, I crawl into my bed row and close my eyes. Yeah, what a day. You know, stopping the commander, we defeated the Shadow General anyway. Uh, yeah, at any rate, so yeah. The night is still, and gradually I can hear the soft breathing of my fans as they each drift to sleep. A gentle, uh, a gentle shuffling noise has me blink open my eyes. Shuffling noise? See the pango slip out of Diana's bed row and tiptoe over, tiptoe over towards the back of spheres. Oh no, you sneaky pango! Dancing back every so often as her, at her sleeping form to make sure she doesn't hear. Just because she's, you you don't let her spot you doesn't mean I can't spot you. <laughs> when he gets close, he shuffles the last few inches to the back and scrambles inside. The last thing I hear is a purring of poise as I drift to sleep. Well, just I guess we can just let the. Pango B. Alright. 